like you mentioned, Olivia, we're going to be looking at what we're considering the next evolution of code completions. And so for folks who are using GitHub Copilot, you, you might be familiar with the great ghost text suggestions that you get for when you're writing code. And it helps you add new code and add new logic as you're working on a project. But another huge part of software development in the software development lifecycle is editing existing code and existing logic that's already there. So that's where next edit suggestions or NES comes into play. And that's what I'm going to be showing off today. So to kind of frame the demos that we'll be taking a look at, I have this template repo and I have a few different categories of different kinds of like projects and scenarios where you might find NES to be really helpful or powerful. And with any of these, um, you could go ahead and follow along today because NES is live both in VS Code Insiders and Stable. I'm using VS Code Insiders and the Code Pilot pre-release extension because I just love getting all the latest like UI and fixes that the team has, but you could totally use it in Insiders or stable. And you'll just want to make sure that you have the uh, Copilot Next Edit Suggestion setting set, uh, which you can also configure in um, the, the Copilot icon we have down here. You can select Wait, why did I not realize that you could do that there? Yeah, yeah, this oh, is awesome. also pretty new in Insiders. And so it might also be in stable, but definitely in Insiders. Yeah, you can configure your completions in NES right here. That's so cool. Yeah, I know. All, all, I heard you and Cassie talking earlier that just getting all the little tips from everyone. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, like that's super like you. <laughs> Chat, this is not like a shtick. Like, like genuinely, like we are just like learning all these things because there's so much stuff. And so we're learning along with you. It's really cool to be here. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. So we can go ahead and start seeing what NES looks like in action. I think that one scenario where hopefully you'll find it to be quite helpful is if you are changing the intent of what some code achieves. So what do I mean by that? So we're starting here in a simple geometry.ts file, so a TypeScript file. And I have a definition for a point class. And right now it looks like it's a two-dimensional point class because I see that it has X and Y variables in the constructor and in the distance calculation. But what if rather than having it be a 2D point, I want to make it a 3D point or a 10D point or just something more than a 2D point. I'm going to go ahead and rename it here. And so I'm going to name it to point 3D. And with that, Copilot was able to predict what I might want to change next. So what's cool about NES is it's both predicting where that code change will need to happen and what it should be. Because this code change wasn't just immediately on line one, it's a few lines later. And so looking at it here, it suggests adding a Z variable, which I think makes sense. That's pretty cool that I was able to predict that just by renaming point to point 3D, that I want to go ahead and make this a three-dimensional point. And now when I'm looking at this, there's a few different ways I can interact with it. Uh, since we know tab is the magic key that everyone's using to interact with completions, I can just tab to go ahead and navigate to and accept this suggestion, or I can go ahead and hover over it. And I can see that we have this nice menu that tells us kind of the key bindings again for accepting or rejecting the suggestion. And we can also configure the UI in different ways. And so the team is exploring different ways to make the UI um, just like what users want, helping you stay in the flow. So whether it's like how your code is maybe shifted or rendered in comparison to the NES widget, you can configure that in settings. And we also have a link to docs to go ahead and learn more. So I could go ahead and click to, to navigate NES to this. I could accept by clicking on the, the widget here. We also have this cool rendering here that you'll see pop up to draw your attention over the arrow. Or if I want to stay completely keyboard, I'm in the zone. I'm going to tab to navigate to the suggestion. So now we can see that it's like in focus. I'm actually at line of the suggestion. Tab to accept it. So simple as that. And then once I've done that, NES doesn't just stop there. It's going to continue its work to be like, OK, are there other changes that kind of cascade from what you just did? And so this looks good to me, too. I want to update the distance. So I'm going to tab to get to it, tab to accept it. As simple as that. Going on to another example in changing intent, we'll also be looking at different kinds of projects and languages today because Copilot and NES specifically works on different kinds of languages. It's not restricted to just one. And we'd also love to get your feedback as you try out NES. How does it work for you on certain project types or scenarios or languages? Does it work better or worse? And like giving us that feedback, whether it's on social media or GitHub issues, super helpful for our team because we're putting in a ton of work to rapidly improve in this space. So here in this stats.cpp, so we have a C++ file, I have some different calculations some different math here. And maybe instead of getting the minimum, I'd like to go ahead and get the max. So I'm going to update this to get max. And similarly, it's going to update now the logic and the variables that are used without this uh, throughout this function uh, to help me update there. 
And it's nice, too, because it doesn't just simply, like, update the variable name. Like, it didn't just say sample less than max. It's like, okay, also, like, you should probably go ahead and update the logic here as well. And something I want to point out here, too, is that you'll see that you still do get ghost text and completions. Uh, one way that you're able to tell if something came from more of completions versus NES is right now NES is always going to have that arrow next to it in the gutter menu. And so since this suggestion doesn't have that, this comes from code completions. Okay. And um, it looks like this is this is technically a viable option, but I don't quite want to do this because I think I'd like to just update this logic instead. So when I get a completion or if I get an NES, I can just hit escape on my keyboard to get rid of it. Or you can keep typing and it'll also get um, replaced. So then I can go ahead and update that. And then we can see that the updates continue forward here. So I can go ahead and tab to accept that. 